can we also talk a little bit about the power of networking in the music business? Because, you know, you, you talked even just a great example, just getting a call from Steve Jordan. Obviously, that wasn't the first time you met him or heard of him. So right, right. networking in the music business for you. Man. OK, so this is a big thing. This is a big thing. I have a, a lot of friends who have always some have kind of criticized me and some have been like, man, I just don't understand. And, and I, and I share this. So the criticizing has come from like, man, you do all this posting and you share this and you know, da, 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 da. I just don't do that, man. I just can't, I just don't do that. And then some people are like, man, I don't know how to do that. Cause it comes off. I, I don't want to come off as pretentious and it's all about me. And it's my answer to all that is that there's a balance. So my balance is understanding that for me, I don't network for the, for it, with the motive of, of trying to gain opportunity. I don't network because I'm like, oh, this person could give me this opportunity or this person knows this person, da, 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 da. I network because I actually sincerely want to get to know people. I recently said this uh, to some, some, uh, some other people. It's just kind of just what I say. It's like I network that you should network sincerely for the purpose of getting to know a person not what they can do for you because that lasts much longer than the opportunity. And so that's how I've always tried to be. I, I don't always gel with everybody. So like just because a person can give me opportunity doesn't mean necessarily that I want it because I, I you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, sure. Sure. So I think it's just important to just be yourself and be honest. Don't be showy. I, I met Steve maybe five plus years, five years before that opportunity happened. And it happened in a very organic way. It happened, he was in Memphis again at Royal and he was cutting, uh, he had just finished Bob Skaggs record that he cut there and Ronnie Baker Brooks record. And I was introduced, I was brought to the studio by David, uh, David Porter and David Porter introduced him or introduced me to him. And then he, uh, we went into the drum room, just he and I, just this very special moment. And everybody who had met him up until this point in Memphis, everybody's posting pictures. I met Steve Jordan. Da, 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 da. And when I met him, I mean, it was, it couldn't have been, it couldn't have been more perfect. We literally were in the studio alone. And he got on the drum set. He's like, man, check out these drums. He started playing this groove. And I'm standing there just watching him. And I'm like, man, this, this is insane. You know, and he's just sitting there in this groove. And he gets up. He's like, hey, man, come play this kid. It sounds great. I was like, okay. And immediately I just sat down and I didn't try to reinvent the wheel. I just played the groove he played. And he's walking. He's pacing. He's like, oh, yeah, yeah. And so he, he got a conga. He sat down. He started playing conga while I'm playing the groove. And I'm sitting here. I wasn't pulling out my phone and like, hey, guys, you got to, oh, my God, you got to see this. I was just like, this is for me. Yeah. You know, this is for me. I'm not going to, this is, this is a real moment. Right. And we did that. And shortly after that, we went into the control room because they were finishing mixing this record. And he was like, you know what? It's just that quick. This is the first day I met Steve. He's like, you, you know, Boz is looking for a drummer. You, you want to play? Let me call Boz. And he calls Boz wow. right there. Man. He's like, Boz. And he left, he, Boz didn't answer, but he left a message. He's like, Boz, I don't know if you're still looking for a drummer, but I got one right here in Memphis, man. Give me a call. Let me know. And, it, and I'm sitting here like, <laughs> this is how that works. Right. This is, that's how it, that's right. how it happens. That's right. It's the sincerity of knowing that. And I don't know what he sensed from me, but I, I know what I've sensed from people in a si similar situation where you just you just see the heart of a person and the sincerity of a person. And they're there because they want to be there because they want to know you. Right. I didn't ask him for that. And, and that opportunity didn't, didn't happen. I think at that point, J.J. Johnson had the gig at the point. He had just got J.J. Johnson. Yeah. But it was just like how, you know, and 
And over the years, I would see him and we would hang out, whether it was in Nashville or, you know, Memphis, and he would check on me or whatnot. And and I think it was just the, the, the situation of like, you know, now I have this opportunity, let me call Terrence. And it was just, it was honest, it was sincere. And when I called him to thank him about it, mm. he was just so like, oh yeah, man, no problem. All right, so to the next thing. And we just start talking about something else. It's awesome. You know, so those are the kind of opportunities I've had with people. Um, and sometimes you have you have relationships where nothing happens and that should be okay. Right. Right. It's not about the opportunity. It's about again, just knowing people. Right. Yeah, you know? building those relationships. Yeah. Yes. The world is much smaller than you know, and your name can spread very fast in negative ways if you if you're not careful. So Absolutely. Yeah. Powerful, powerful story. I love that. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> and it sounds like I mean he he saw your heart just because the power of music the power of drumming playing yeah together, right yeah man yeah Fantastic. it's it's insane i have so many steve stories yeah it's great <laughs> <laughs> it's great <laughs>